So I just pulled out of our slip in uh, here in Bergen. I called into the bridge and they're gonna open in 15 more minutes. So we'll probably just tie up to the, alongside this dock and wait for that to happen. But I wanted to make sure the motor was warming up and starting before we uh, had to try to make it under the bridge in time. All right, there, now it's opening. The sun is almost out in Bergen. It's barely behind that little cloud. I can see blue sky. So we motored upwind for a little bit and now the sails are up. And we're sailing in Norway. Should have plenty of, of wind. We'll be on the kind of a beam reach for the next hour and then we turn downwind towards Haugshund, 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 something like that. Thanks for the Eric, the uh, um, the Norwegian sailor lives at, near there and I want to try to visit him, have a beer, share some sailing stories. That guy is so hardcore. Um, <laughs> I don't pretend to be anywhere near as brave as him, but it'd be cool to meet him. It's a whole lot nicer sailing when it's not raining out here. I think Bergen gets like a ridiculous amount of rain per year. Like more, it rains more days than it doesn't. Okay, so this is Norway, I guess. Sunny day to, uh, we have hail right now. <laughs> Now I'm hiding out of the rain. You know, if I'm sighing to rain it's so fast. I just gotta peek up here every once in a while. Okay. No ships. We're in kind of a narrow channel. Um, so I'm just kind of staring at the chart and we're getting very gusts, gusts coming through here. And then it's like no wind and I have the gusts, there's no wind. I think um, I'll anchor tonight and then for the, the rest of the part of this trip down to Haugesund, I'll go outside into the North Sea. I mean, plus I, I can't go visit Eric without a proper uh, sailing through the North Sea in a gale. So might as well do that tomorrow. Whoa, a submarine. How cool. Making some, uh, some haggis. This is the vegetarian version of haggis. Um, like sweet stuff for the grocery, and I got some tomatoes and peppers in there. Making up a little dinner. I think we're getting pretty close to a spot where it's actually shallow enough to anchor, so that's where I'm aiming. We'll probably get there in a couple hours. The wind's picking up, so maybe actually, maybe even sooner. I think the uh, vegetarian version of haggis is pretty good. It's crazy how many big ships come through uh, these kind of small channels out here. And, and I'm not even like in one of the main uh, uh, channels out to the ocean. So we just made it out. Well, that, that leads out to the, uh, the North Sea there. And you can see there's a, a big really swell coming in. Just kind of changed the sailing uh, characteristics. And we're going into the sunshine over here. But we've got, looks like another squall back here. Big rainbow. So, uh, maybe that's about to come up on us. <laughs> yep, it's starting to rain. I'm gonna come put my, my rain jacket on. 
I'm using the electric autopilot because it's way too windy for that thing to, or variable for that thing to be working. But we're check, we're keeping an eye on uh, the batteries real carefully because uh, we drained them once. So you can see the uh, electric autopilot drains between, you know, zero and two or three amps. And uh, the voltage looks fine for the batteries. I'll run the motor for about 30 minutes as I come into anchor or uh, the uh, dock. And that, with our little bit of sun we got today, should keep the batteries topped off. This looks like a nice little harbor to tie up into. Let's see if we can find a dock for the night. All right, here we are. Lots of space on this floating dock. I'm assuming it's a visitor dock. It's all tied up. I guess grocery store is open for another 30 minutes so we can get some food. Just gonna go for a quick little run around here. There's a little nature preserve. I'm gonna go run to there and back and then we'll head off down to Hogsund. The wind's picking up, um, so I think it's time to get going. So we're just pulling off the dock now. Um, I paid the harbor fee at the grocery store. It was 80, 80, uh, Norwegian kroners, which is about like ten dollars for a night. I think it was maybe extra for you'd be using electricity, but uh, you guys rode around the motor for a little bit. I didn't really use much power last night. But look at this: a perfectly clear blue sky, and the sun is out, and it's not raining. Of course, everything is soaking wet. Condensation is starting to become a problem inside the boat. <clears throat> I think I'll run the diesel heater this morning while the uh, engine's going. So. Uh, could maybe dry out the, the, the cabin. All right, and we are headed out into the open water. Cut my hand open pretty good, uh, reaching back. One of my little pins was, uh, that holds the, uh, turnbuckles, the safety wire. Got me. I need to curl that over. We're doing about six knots, just starting to get out into a little bit of the swell. Staying pretty dry. Uh, still got maybe a couple more miles till we're actually out completely into the open water. We're kind of being protected by this land mass here. Um, probably trying to hug the coast a little bit. It does look like we're going to get some uh, gusts in 30 knots, maybe 32 knots later uh, this afternoon. Um, so I'll probably put a reef in a little bit later. That'll help it steer, better boat steer better. But right now I feel like we're, we're just, it's really nice. The sun's out. I'm staying warm. Couldn't ask for much better weather than this. Just put out the whisker pole and I reefed the main, and uh, I really wanted to put the second reef in, but um, I ended up putting the third one in because my reefing lines were all tangled in the mast steps, and it's just how it worked out. I always end up getting those battens all discombobulated. I'm sure I'm gonna break one soon. I might have broke already. It, it just really didn't go well. I hate my reefing setup. But actually, now we're moving along pretty nice. Okay, we just had three jibes in a row. I think we finally got it sorted out. Um, uh, it's very uh, not going very smoothly. I'm not used to being in this much uh, rolly swell action and this much wind, but I think it got all sorted. So we should be good for the next uh, few hours. Get. 
little bigger as we make our way further offshore. Breaking too. Might uh might want to start do a jive so we head further closer to shore. Some darker clouds coming up too, maybe a squall coming up. I don't think it's gonna rain today though. But that does look like rain. We're moving fast though. <laughs> So we're getting some real strong winds now, so I've geared up. We have to like end of the cockpit. I'm gonna end up hand steering now. The uh, wind vane is getting a little bit, uh, uh, it's, just, it's having trouble steering with the waves. The, the wind is shifting a little bit, and we need to keep the boat um, from getting in the poop. They've had a few waves coming here already. Um, I'm kind of hoping one of these darker clouds pass. Maybe the wind will dry down a little bit. I think I can fix it later. Not too bad. Looks pretty bad though. So we are about to sail through an area on the chart marked caution, dangerous waves, sea pilot chart. I don't have a pilot chart. And there are some pretty big waves, I would say, outside of this area. So we'll see what happens when we go inside this area. It gets a little shallower. We're getting near the mouth of the channel. I don't see any other way around it, really. We're just gonna have to go right through it. Um, but we got a pretty good boat, we'll be all right. Look at the harbor, there are so many lights. There's a boat coming out here. You can probably make that one. So, a challenging approach. Lots of rocks out here. Like, so many navigation lights, it's like overwhelming. Good thing we got a GPS. All right, we're coming in. I tried to start the motor, and then all my electrical stuff died when I hit the starter button. So, I tried to flip the fuse, it still didn't work. Maybe I could tie up a a dock somewhere along here. Be nice if I could see anything. So I just raised the mainsail all the way up because the, these buildings are blocking our wind and I wanted to give myself a little more power. Um, we're gonna have to go on a beam reach through here. I think it's wide enough, we'll be fine. And then it looks like a, a really long seawall we can just tie up to inside there. So far, so good. Just a little town up there. Oh, we lost our wind. We're gonna go behind this building here, but I think we got enough speed to make it through. She cut in. Yeah, we're gonna do this. Well, it's actually so peaceful sailing in it here at night. It's like not a noise. Um, kind of nice without the motor. So here we are, coming into the wharf. I mean, you couldn't ask for an easier spot here. Okay, we're tied up. Apparently this is not a public K though, so um, we gotta figure out what's going on with this motor. Basically what happened is I turned the key and then I hit the starter and the, all the lights on the engine control went off. But my main battery is 12.7 volts still. So that's, still, it's not the battery, it's like, Oh man, it's probably one of these electrical connections. Does anything look out of place? Okay, it's a new morning. 
and hopefully have a fresh mind to start troubleshooting the engine electrical issues. So I'm thinking maybe cleaning these connections because um, I think it's a, a weak, I think the, whatever, the, the starting solenoid is getting a weak current is my suspicion. So I think it's just maybe like undersized wire or corroded connections. Okay, every once in a while I get a little bit of a power to there. I just found this inline fuse right here for the engine control. So that seems pretty suspect. It looks kind of corroded. I think that's going to be our problem right there. <laughs> Pulled it out, ripped the fuse in half. Okay, I cut out that inline fuse holder and looks like we're much better. Let's just heat shrink this up. Okay, I cleaned the engine off just a little bit. I still could use a real thorough cleaning one day. All right, let's give it a try. So now that our motor is working, we're gonna head down to the, uh, the actual guest marina. So here we are at the guest harbor. Anders gave me this electric heater and also the, the cord to plug it in and I and then all the, the battery charger but the heater oh my gosh it's so nice I don't want to use all my my diesel right now or the battery um to run it so this is pretty good since I can just plug it in at the marina I don't know why I didn't have one of these before I suppose I wasn't really planning on staying in as many marinas as I, as I have been but um there's so many and they're so easy to just like use the app to, to pay for and they're pretty reasonably priced, I guess. So I think there's also not that many good anchorages around uh, Norway. There are some, but a lot of it's very deep. So it's, it's kind of hard to just find your own spot to anchor. I mean, you could anchor in if you hit, but I just don't like lifting the anchor more than 30 feet. It's just so much work. All right, now we're moving the boat over to, uh, next to Eric's boat, Tessie from NBJS Sailing. So here I am with, uh, Eric of No Bullshit Just Sailing. I'm sure most of my subscribers already, already follow this guy. If you don't, check him out. So we're gonna talk, we're talking about like kind of single-handed and stuff and uh, having a good time. Yeah, nice to meet you. Yeah, so. Here we are aboard Tessie. This boat is so tricked out. So thanks for watching. Uh, sorry to cut the video with Eric short. Uh, we planned on doing like a little interview or kind of video together, but uh, after, a few drinks and get it, we started getting into the sailing stories. I kind of like forgot about YouTube for a little bit, but he's a really cool guy and we got a lot of common. So I think we'll probably run into each other again and maybe we can do another video together uh, or a collaboration or something. That'd be really cool. I'd like that. I hope you'll tune in next time for the next video where I'll continue sailing uh, down the coast of Norway over towards Sweden. And Sweden is where I hauled the boat out for the winter. There's going to be videos of this coming up. Um, and But actually now I'm actually in Florida. So I flew around Europe and came back here for the winter. Uh, it's a little bit warmer. Uh, I got a little Hobie cat uh, here at my grandmother's place I've been boating around with and I'm also working on my um, glider and sail plane uh, pilot's license and I'm going to do some videos about that too if you think that's interesting. Uh, so there's lots of lots more content coming up. I hope I'll see you guys uh, next in the next video. And one more thing just to mention uh, the plan of course is next year in the spring to go back to Sweden on pickled herring and continue sailing uh, around Europe down into the Mediterranean and then across the Atlantic towards the end of next year and into the Caribbean.